Selamat datang, good day and welcome to the International and Domestic Virtual Colloquium or COMAT 2023 organized by the Institute of Teacher Education, International Languages Campus, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. I'm Anne Jerisovi Devasagayam and I'm the moderator for today's colloquium series. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you for joining us on our live YouTube channel and EDU Web TV for COMAT 2023. The theme for this year's colloquium is Optimizing Future Proof Education. The goal of this colloquium is to provide the space for educators all over the world to discuss, share and exchange views with fellow educators on topics related to education and how it is transforming globally. Indeed, through this colloquium, there's plenty to learn and expand our knowledge. COMA 2023 brings to you 18 series in the form of individual webinars with speakers from Malaysia and other countries. This is the ninth series of our virtual colloquium and I hope you will stay tuned till the end of this session. But before we look the talk, let me lay out a few housekeeping matters. First, everyone who attends to this webinar series will be given an e-certificate with after each session. Therefore, do not forget to register your name now. Make sure it is typed correctly and your email address is accurate too. For viewers attached to the Ministry of Education Malaysia, your attendance will be recorded in SPL KPM. The registration link will be shared to the viewers about 30 minutes in the webinar. Second, we would love to hear from you during today's presentation. If you have any questions for our speaker, please free, feel free to send it through the chat box. The speaker will be answering questions at the end of the session. If you if we don't answer your question during today's webinar, we will surely do a follow-up. And finally, we would like to encourage you to share today's webinar with others through your social networks. Now, allow me to introduce our speaker for today. Ms. Chapa Purnima Velagadra is currently the head of department NIE. She's the course coordinator for Diploma in Teaching English as a Second Language, National RESC Coordinator of 30 Regional English Support Centers Island-wide, Curriculum Developer for English as a Second Language, Paper Setter and a Moderator for English Language, National Level Reviewer and an Editor in English Language Textbooks, and resource book publications, mediator and the facilitator of the foreign fellowship programs, American Center and the Australian Volunteers International Program. Her research interest is teacher training and curriculum development, online teaching or learning and language teaching and learning. Ms. Chapa has done numerous foreign trainings, not forgetting in IPG, KBA, and University Malaya. She has carried out exchange program, developing 21st century skills for globalizing English as a foreign language, EFL, classrooms with Indiana University Purdue, University Indiana Police, IUPUI, Indiana Police USA, and professional development for teacher trainers during fall 2018 with Arizona State University, USA. There are several publications and extracts under her belt that makes her outstanding in her field. The practicality of today's education for a better tomorrow. This is the topic for today's webinar. The practicality of today's education is crucial for building a better tomorrow. Education is not only about acquiring knowledge, but it also helps individuals develop skills and perspectives that are essential for success in the modern world. With advancements in technology and the rapid pace of change in society, it is vital that education adapts to meet the need for today's learners. 
One practical approach to education is to focus on developing skills that are in high demand in the current job market. This can include technical skills such as coding, data analysis, and digital marketing. It can also include soft skills such as critical thinking, communication, and problem solving. Another practical approach to education is to provide learners with real world experiences. Education should not only focus on this, but focus on developing a broader perspective. This can include an understanding of global issues, cultural awareness, and social responsibility. By promoting these values, education can help individuals become better global citizens who are equipped to address the complex challenges of our time. Ultimately, the practicality of today's education depends on its ability to meet the needs of learners in a rapidly changing world. So, Ms. Chapa Purnima Dalagadra, we are excited to hear about more from you about this topic. Without further delay, please welcome Ms. Chapa Purnima Velagadra. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Ann Jai Selvi Devasagayam. Hope I pronounced your name correctly. For your detailed but very inspiring uh, introduction about me and uh, what I have done in the field. So thank you so much for that. And uh, very good morning to all of you who are joining us today for this session, uh, uh, from, uh, especially from Malaysia, teachers, teacher educators, and all the officials who are related to education, and the others who are joining us from anywhere in the world. So you are warmly welcome to the session. And before starting my session proper, let me take this opportunity to thank Dr. Munira Hanafi and uh, the officials from the Institute of Teach Teacher Education, International Languages Campus, Kuala Lumpur, for giving me this great opportunity to join this highly academic knowledge sharing forum. Uh, and also I sincerely thank her and her team uh, for this valuable opportunity and the support given right throughout. So uh, with that little note, let me once again tell that I'm Chapa Purnima Velagedara, as Ms. Jai Selvi correctly said, uh, from the Department of English from the National Institute of Education, Sri Lanka. So talk to, to talk about the National Institute of Sri Lanka, it is the apex body in Sri Lanka, which is responsible for curriculum development, uh, then teacher training, teacher educators training, and all almost all academic guidance for the general education system in Sri Lanka. So uh, with that little note about the place where I serve, Let's look at the topic for today's session. So to my understanding, when we say the practicality of today's education for a better tomorrow, so it's really, really difficult for you to, um, I mean, think of the pr practicality. Now, thinking is okay, but when it comes to assessment, that's really difficult. How do you assess a, a, a particular um, education uh, against practicality? because it's really difficult to find the parameters for you to assess it. Since it's changing, the education is changing uh, due to various reasons that occurs in the society, the community, in the globe, education changes. Therefore, uh, to my understanding, there are three key terms in the topic. One is the education, second one is today, and the third one is tomorrow. Why do we take this uh, time demarcation for the topic today and tomorrow? That gives us the message, okay, we need to look at education with the time. So with that little note, let me start my presentation proper. So this is the outline. I'm just going to talk about uh, uh, the defining terms of education in the current era in general. And then I'm going to look at the defining term, uh, sorry, then I would like to draw your attention to why we cannot have the same education during all eras. Uh, it comes under rationale behind the changing nature. Then uh, we will look at the key areas 
that we need to consider in terms of change in education. The next focus will be on major challenges in future education. Then we are to discuss a possible roadmap for education and it will be the next focus. Finally, we will be discussing how can we assess the practicality and effectiveness of the previously explained roadmap, education for future. So with that, if we move on to the next slide, just look at this. This is how the UNESCO in the year of 2021 defined the term education. I really want you all to look at uh, the sp uh, specific portion of this definition that I colored in blue. If you can see it clearly, uh, just focus only on that blue colored portion of the definition. So according to that, education, it's a process of acquiring knowledge, skills, values, and attitudes that enable individuals to participate fully in their communities and to live in dignity and mutual respect. So most of us being educators and people who are involving in the field of education, this is nothing new, right? This is actually what we are focusing at in education. So giving them or acquiring knowledge, skills and attitudes. We have been talking about this since long time and still it is valid. So education is that, that is the base. But look at the lengthy definition given by UNESCO in 2021. Education today is not that easy, is not that simple. That is what we need to understand. So education today is a combination of every bit of life aspects. If I summarize, that is what I could say. So it's every bit of life aspects. If you take all these expectations into one hold, that is education. So if I take you to the next uh, slide, you will see. Now I'm going to take some of those uh, ideas given within the definition as isolated phrases. So we have promoting social justice. We have promoting economic development. We have promoting environmental sustainability then contributing to the well-being of their families, communities, and society. So if you look at the first one, promoting social justice, and if I assign you with a task, okay, just think about the profession that is existing in the society related directly to this particular aspect. Do you all get the educationist in your mind? I doubt. So basically, uh, that the profession that comes into your mind could be the policeman or maybe any kind of an official related to judicial, judiciary system of the country, maybe a lawyer kind of. And when it comes to economic development, we directly gets the idea of businessman, uh, entrepreneur kind of. And environment sustainability, when it comes to that, we, we think of in, environmentalists. Per se. But anyway, once again, if you look at this definition, promoting social justice, economic development, environmental sustainability, building peaceful and inclusive societies, enables individuals to adapt to changing circumstances, contribute to the well-being of their families, communities, and society. How diversified the area of education is now. That is what we need to understand. When you think of practicality of education, all these aspects come into play. So when you are trying to put up a parameter to measure this, all these things are to be considered. That is my argument here. So if you look at uh, the uh, next slide, uh, to uh, so, so what's my point here? In 2021, UNESCO's definition on education is highly diversified and it surpasses the general boundary of education, opening avenue uh, for very many aspects to be mingled with education. And the biggest question is, 
why this expansion of expectations in education occurs over time. So with the time, we get many demands, many requirements, changes in lifestyles, so that why answer to the question why we need to understand how the society's changes over time. Then only we can draw the demarcation between today and tomorrow. Why do we need to discuss an education fits for a certain era? Not for all times. We are not talking about education that fits for all time. We always take a certain era and say, okay, this is the education, features of education or expectations of education for this particular era. So let's see how and why this happens. In order to explain that, let me take you uh, to the involvement of industry in the globe. So for that, this image on this slide mainly explains how the industry changes over the time as a result of inventions. The time span here is from 18th century to 21st century, as you can correctly see. This, expand, uh, this explains four major changes that occurs uh, from 18th century, then first part of 20th century, latter part of 20th and the 21st centuries. The change from Industry 1.0 to Industry 4.0, as they name it, as a result of inventions is explained here. So if you look at Industry 1.0, the main focus is on steam power and mass production, where the people, are, people were working in factories in huge bulks. Uh, so the education, sorry, Industry 2.0 is considered with the invention of electricity. When it comes to Industry 2.0, the main source of power changes from steam, uh, uh, steam power to electricity. And then Industry uh, 3.0 is the era of computation with the invention of computers. And finally, we have so Industry 4.0, uh, that is to be identified with smart machines and globalization. Then autonomous robots, augmented reality, big data, cybersecurity, Internet of Things are some of the highlights within Industry 4.0. So what happens when the industry is revolving over the time? Doesn't it affect the human lifestyle of the particular community? When the industry changes, naturally this happens, lifestyle changes. So the demands, the requirements of man changes. And uh, depending on the lifestyle of the people, don't the priorities change? Yeah, they do. They do change. So, so do the human expectations. When the requirements change, expectations definitely be changed. Hence, there is no argument that education needs to be changed according to fulfill the expectations of changing societies. So being educators, we are fully aware of this industry change from industry 1.0 to industry 4.0. And what we need to uh, do now is to make links between changing nature of industry with the changing nature of education. So if we go uh, to the next slide, I have given you here uh, in, in, a, in a very brief manner, how education features have been changed based on industry changes. So education 1.0 is focused on, uh, uh, with education 1.0 that resulted from upon industry 1.0, we have lecture-based rote learning modes with the emphasis on memorization. So if you think, if you uh, consider uh, 18th century era and the education that we pra practiced during that time, it's quite obvious that this was the scenario then. And then education 2.0 goes with internet enabled learning with education 3.0 is to be considered as knowledge based education. So with the invention of electricity, you get computers and then you go to internet facility and education 4.0 is an innovation based education. We are moving forward. We are not just using computer. <clears throat> we are not just using internet, but we are moving forward 
creating something using internet, internet and the technology, basically. And education 4.0 is uh, an era with a bit of, with a touch of creativity as well. This makes the changing nature of education very clear in a rationalistic way. So you need to understand, as I told you, why do we need education for yesterday, education for today, education for tomorrow? In order to understand the need of change, we need to understand how the society changes over the time. So that is what I have been doing here. And then if you go to this, <clears throat> We have been talking about education 4.0 for a long period of time now. So it's high time for us to think beyond education 4.0. Why? The uh, Industry 5.0 has been already initiated and practiced in some part because they say Industry 4.0 is going up to 20, uh, starts from 2010 and Industry 5.0 will start from 5.0 starts from 2020, so it has already started, right? So we doubt whether to go with education 4.0 or to have some features uh, mingled with education 4.0 to go into uh, or make the children ready for industry 5.0. You can't get these things in isolation. There is an interconnection between industry change, society change, lifestyle change with the education. Since the expectations change, time to time. So with that, we need to understand the key segments to be considered. Now we know that education needs to be changed according to the uh, needs of the society in a particular era. Then when I say changing education, what is to be changed? That is the big question. It's not, leave, or not, education means not one aspect. It's a combination of certain aspects that you need to consider. So, uh, <clears throat> so, so the next immediate thought that comes to our mind is, if change is needed in future education, what are the key areas of education that one needs to consider in terms of change? Accordingly, we have five key areas, as you can see on my slide. First thing is decision making. Then you have curriculum development and teaching and learning, then assessment. And the last one is general perception. So even if I do not go further, by just looking at this being educators, you can understand Without any of these strands, the change of education will not be a reality. That is the bitter truth. So when we think of changing education for better tomorrow, or if we think of adapting the existing curricula or existing education to suit uh, uh, Industry 5.0 society, then again, we need to consider all these segments with regard to change or in terms of change in education. So uh, if we move on to uh, slide, next slide. So I'm going to describe, or I'm going to consider them one by one now. Areas that change is needed in terms of changing education. So the first thing is decision-making. When I say decision-making in education, this is a huge range. This starts from policy-making and it goes up to the level of the teacher who decides what to teach, how to teach, when to teach, and why do I teach. All these decisions come under this decision making, especially when it comes to policies. So we need to be very careful. So what type of change we need to adapt or uh, use when it comes to decision making? So number one is that the decisions that we take in education should not be just gut feelings, right? So research and evidence play a vital role here. <clears throat> Decision-making should be informed by research and evidence-based practices that have been shown to be effective in improving student learning outcomes. 
we have to have big data to pro prove that, okay, if we take this kind of a de this decision, this will happen, this, will, this positive uh, uh, outcome will occur. So you need to go, beyond, go by research and evidence-based practices when it comes to decision-making. Then emerging trends and technologies. Decision makers should be aware of emerging trends and technologies in education and consider how they can be integrated into teaching and learning to enhance student engagement and achievement. So when the, in the, the, the um, technology changes, if the decision makers are blind eye to that and take decisions, then again, the needed change or expected change in the field of education will not occur. So the advancement of technology is very important when it comes to decision making in education. The next one is student-centered approaches. So when you analyze the teaching learning approaches or the decisions that we have taken with regard to education from the 18th century up to now, we feel that, okay, the change of the teacher, sorry, role of the teacher and the role of the student, they change as over time, they change. But now in this, if we are to change education for future, we really need to think of student-centered approach because this is the time that we think learning, uh, the child or the learner is 100% accountable for his or her learning. Whatever the teacher does, whatever the curriculum uh, asks them to do, whatever the government wants them to do, does not matter. What matters the best is the accountability of the learner, where he needs to go, what he wants to be. So self student-centered approaches are to be considered with that. So decision-making should be focused on meeting the diverse needs and interests of students and providing them with personalized learning experiences that are relevant and engaging. Relevant and engaging. And we need to consider their interest and self-paced learning needs to be uh, enhanced. So the next one is collaboration and partnerships when it comes to decision making. So when you take countries in the globe, we have developed countries, we have developing countries. So we have countries that needs to go a long way to come to the level of development that is expected. But anyway, whatever the country is, when it comes to education, Collaboration and partnerships are really important uh, when it comes to future-proof education. So this is again a collaboration that I'm talking to you, uh, the teachers, teacher educators in Malaysia, and I'm sharing knowledge with the experience that I have in Sri Lankan education system. So this is collaboration. This is sharing knowledge. We share something and we learn from everybody. We can't say that, okay, I'm waiting until this developed, particular de developed nation come and give us this. No, sometimes we have better things from developing countries. Some are, sometimes we have better practices with regard to education from the nations that we do not care most. So it's really important being educators, unlike politicians and other segments of the uh, society, education, educators. When it comes to education, we need to initiate collaboration. We need to always promote partnerships in decision making. So um, this is decision makers should collaborate with educators and when it comes to lower levels with parents and stakeholders to ensure that decisions are informed by diverse perspectives and that everyone has a voice in shaping education policy and practice. So decision making is not legally given to one side now. So people can't say that we are the ones to uh, decide on education rules, no. Everyone of the society has that right. Parents, teacher, learner, even the, stake, even the other stakeholders. Maybe people who are involving in economic forums in country. They have to have a voice within decision-making in education. So collaboration and partnership is really important. Then we need to go for equity and social justice. 
So it should be grounded in principles of equity and social justice, ensuring that all students have access to high quality education and that education serves as a tool for promoting social mobility and reducing inequality. So when we take policies in different countries, we understand that uh, so as like uh, developed countries, even the developing countries have the very same kind of documents mentioning that, okay, equity and equality needs to be attended in education. But if you think of the reality, the actual scenarios of those countries, the situation is not as same as the developed. But in, even in developed countries, we have that. So equal opportunity is something else and equity is another thing. So developing countries are struggling with giving equal opportunities and also treating equity within education. So when you say equal opportunities, like the uh, image that I have given to you on my slide. So when you look at uh, equality, you can see the same size of boxes are given there for the three children to watch the particular game. But there is a fence there as a barrier. So if you give the same height boxes to different height students, that won't do. The taller one will better succeed than the shorter one. But when, when we talk about equity, equity is considering their level, you provide something or support or assist or guide them to get their expected results to be achieved. So equity and social justice is really an important matter. So it's grounded in principles of equity and social justice, ensuring that students have access to high quality education and that education serves as a tool for promoting social mobility. So by considering these factors, decision makers can create education systems that are responsive to the needs of students, adaptable to changing circumstances and designed to promote positive outcomes for all learners. So this is the first area that we need to look at when we think of uh, education for future, education for today, or education for yesterday. This is one area we need to look at. So if we are to go to future, these are the areas, these are the trends, these are the avenues that we need to look at. So if we move on to the next area, that is curriculum development. So this is a major or key issue with regard to education. So after you get a sound decision based on research and evidence practice based practices, you need to look into curriculum, whether we are bringing those things correctly into the curricula, the instructional materials and curriculum. So the first thing I need to uh, discuss here is the learning outcomes. Curriculum should be designed with clear learning outcomes in mind reflecting the knowledge, skills, and competencies that students will need to succeed in the 21st century. Then we have now, when, when it uh, says the learning outcomes, what we need to understand is the entrepreneurship opportunities. Because when we uh, develop curriculum uh, for a country in future, we need to look at what the country really needs. So very recently, I happened to read an article where they say that it's a comparison between the developed and developing countries uh, in terms of uh, skilled and non-skilled workers that serve in their communities. So it's surprising to see that how the demarcation is drawn between skilled and non-skilled workers who serve for the betterment of the economy. Because in developed countries, they have the majority is on the side of skilled workers. And uh, uh, compare, comparatively, a lesser portion is for non-skilled workers. But the scenario changes up, goes up, upside down with developing and other nations. So that is because now when you with that, now it doesn't matter whether you have skilled or non-skilled uh, as far as uh, that serves the purpose of the country. but. When you read the reports, economic reports of the particular countries, you understand that it is because they have not thought of 
what the country is asking for through education. Education goes in a separate manner and the needs of the country goes in another line. So that won't do. So if we are thinking of future education, better education for future, this uh, learning outcomes needs to be adjusted according to the needs. And then we need to think of student-centered approach. Since we were discussing that last uh, uh, previous slide as well, I'm not go going to go into detail, but just to say that curriculum development should be grounded in student-centered approaches, taking into account the students' diverse needs, interests, and learning styles. Education is no more a standardized kind of an assessment where, the ch all, where all the children are expected to come to a certain uh, equal level. No. We want the children, uh, we want to see the progress of the children based on their levels. So if they are at level A, we want them to be at level uh, B after a certain uh, intervention. So in, in one classroom, you might have different uh, uh, students at different levels. So that is why we say uh, student-centered approach is needed. And that is why we say personalized learning is needed. So curriculum should look into this matter. And evidence-based practices, as I said earlier, when, when we talk about decision-making, curriculum development also needs to be based on uh, evidence-based practices. Just because something is working out well in a country, you can't adapt it in your country without considering your studies, your context, and your challenges and limitations, you can't do it. So evidence-based practices need to be adapted. And then you have 21st century skills. This is the common area that we all are talking about these days, the big three L's, uh, literacy skills, life skills, right? So learning skills. Curriculum should be designed to develop the 21st century skills that students will need to succeed in a rapidly changing world, including critical thinking, problem solving, creativity, communication, and collaboration. So digital literacy is uh, equal as well, equally important as well. Curriculum should incorporate digital literacy skills to ensure that students are prepared to use technology effectively and responsibly in all aspects of their lives. Now, using technology in a responsible manner is a new area that we need to think of. Using technology is a practice that all students everywhere in the world is practicing, but using it responsibly is to be looked into through curriculum. And interdisciplinary and cross-cultural learning Curriculum should incorporate interdisciplinary and cross-cultural learning experiences to prepare students to be effective global citizens and to engage in the complex uh, interconnected world of the 21st century. So inclusivity and diversity should be there. Curriculum should be designed to promote inclusivity and diversity, recognizing the importance of valuing and respecting differences among students and to make sure that all students have access to high quality education. So by considering these factors, curriculum developers can create educational experiences that are relevant, engaging, and effective in preparing students for success in the 21st century. So the next area is teaching and learning, equally important as the previously uh, explained segments. So, here also, we need to go with the student-centered approaches. So if the curriculum says so, but when it comes to teaching and learning, the teacher does a different thing, then you are not going to get the expected outcome. Therefore, teaching and learning also needs to be considered with student-centered approaches. And we should focus on the interests and needs and learning styles and the speed of the students. This approach emphasizes active, collaborative, and experiential learning experiences that encourage students to take ownership of their learning. And personalization, as I explained earlier. Teaching and learning should be personalized, recognizing that each student is unique and has different needs and interests. This approach emphasizes the use of technology, data analytics, 
and other tools to customize learning experiences for individual students. Then you need to go into project-based and problem-based learning. So the concept of four-walled classroom is getting diluted. We don't say that it's not practical, but anyway, we need to incorporate project-based and problem-based learning kind of things into the uh, teaching learning process. And we need to encourage interdisciplinary and cross-culture learning because uh, we cannot stick to one culture now. We need to teach our students to respect our own culture as well as we need to teach them there are different cultures and that is their way and this is our way and we need to find a path in the middle although we are respecting ours uh, in the same manner we need to respect the others cultures as well and interdisciplinary approach is also needed so uh, in future we will see with the proven studies that the demarcation of uh, specific subject disciplinaries will definitely be uh, I mean, go gone away in future, right? So uh, it is kind of a learning situation that we are dealing with and all subject disciplinaries will be included into one scenario. That type of uh, learning experience uh, will uh, be forecasted so that we need to get ready by now. And then we have the technology integration, as I told you. Now, uh, the best example was the COVID-19 pandemic period. So. Uh, irrespective of the fact that we are a developed nation, we are a developing nation, and we are still a long way to go for developed nation, no developing nation. Irrespective of those differences, each and every one of us were was forced to go with a technology integration. So that is, uh, I would uh, call it a learning gain during that time. We gained that. We, there are, we People are talking about learning loss during pandemic. And at the same way, we need to talk about learning gains as well. So integration of technology in the classroom was gained during that time. So that's really good. And then when we go into the next one, it's the assessment area. How the assessment of education needs to be looked into. So assessment needs to be always authentic, not the paper that you give and just get it answered by the students and marked that will be outdated soon. So we need to think of authentic assessments and we need to think of formative assessments because what matters is not the end product, but the progress, the process. So formative assessments of different types need to be looked into. And then uh, multiple measures. You can't just take one parameter and assess the student against that and say, okay, this one is better than the other, no. No comparison between students. The comparison would be needed within the skill of the same student at a certain time and then the next time after intervention. And also different measures needs to be adapted to see whether we are catering to multiple intelligences as Howard Gardner highlighted. And also a personalization is really needed. Assessment needs to be personalized. Now, for example, if you uh, think of IELTS kind of work right so uh, people do IELTS examinations and they are you have to decide the time you do it you will get the feedback and you know where to uh, improve what to do and everything is they are personalized and uh, you need to think of um, uh, inclusivity and diversity each and every student cannot do the same thing and some are better than the others they can do marvelous things in certain areas but not in other areas so that's there. And also alignment, alignment with learning outcomes. So some people have um, a very uh, systematically developed curriculum and systematically developed learning lesson plans so that when it comes to assessment, they have a different plan. So how can you assess a student that you are against what you have not taught? So the co common saying is that uh, uh, test what you teach, and teach what you are going to test. So we have to abide by that. So alignment of learning outcomes with the assessment is really an important factor when it comes to futuristic education. And then when we are moving on to the next one, th that is the general perception, how we are to do it. This is the most difficult part. As far as the students and the teachers and the parents think, okay, Getting a score at the end of uh, a year-end or term-end exam is 
what is education. We need to go against that. So how are we going to do that? You have to raise awareness regarding how the education changes from time to time and how we need to change our mindset accordingly and how it should the, the expectations of education needs to be changed. And then we have uh, developing partnerships. As I told earlier, so general perceptions can be changed with collaborative partnerships, explaining how the other people in the globe is doing and the succeed that they have taken out of it. And redefining success, this is really important. Now, what do you think as success? Is it the success of education? This, is, this needs to be uh, I mean, assessed again. And emphasizing lifelong learning. Learning does not end. So although we think of 13 years or 12 years experience within the school time as learning, or then again, four years in uh, university as the learning period, no, no way. Future le lifelong learning is the fact that you need to consider. You and I are learning until our death from birth. So life le le lifelong learning is the key factor. And integration of technology we discussed and providing professional development opportunities. Now, this is really important in general to change the general perception. We need to tell them, OK, this is the pathway. If you do this particular thing, this is your pathway. Showing avenues is, is also important. So if we go to the next one, major challenges. Having said, then the, having said these things, we can't expect smooth run of all these things. Shaping the uh, education for future is not so easy because rapid technological advancement is a challenge for us. Whether we are able to, as a nation, go in par with this change is a question. So it's a challenge that we need to think of solutions. And growing economic inequality. So some nations are struggling now. Even in my country, we have that. So growing economic in inequality. So that means you are preventing education from giving the proper attention to. So then lack of emphasis on creativity and critical thinking. We are addressing only to the lower levels of um, uh, cognitive development, like understanding kind of. But you, we are, you are not thinking of giving opportunity for them to create and to use their critical thinking or enhancing their critical thinking. And uncertainty about the future. COVID is the best example. We can't predict future. So although we have a very good plan, we never know what will happen tomorrow. And inadequate teacher training. Teacher training is the key thing if we are to go into future. So teacher training, we had to invest a lot on that and lack of global perspectives. You need to think about that as well. Then this is the roadmap. Uh, you need to identify key skills and competencies. And based on that, you need to develop the new curricula and the instructional materials. Then, then invest on teacher training. Then use data to inform decision making, promote collaboration, then embrace innovation, and foster lifelong learning. And with that, assessing practicality and effectiveness, because it was the given topic to me, assessing practicality of today's education. This cannot be done by just looking at a document. This cannot be done just by looking at a set of students in your country. It takes a long time for you to get big data, as research, and evidence-based practices. So these are the areas that you need to think of. Number one, employment outcomes. You need to look into the list of employment opportunities in your country and to see whether education has fulfilled the required amount. That is one parameter. The second parameter is graduate success. So after graduating, whether they are able to find jobs in your job market. If not, the education is a failure. If yes, OK, you have gone to that. So that is the second parameter. Third parameter is students' outcomes. So within the uh, uh, schooling or learning period, you can see that. And career readiness. With the theoretical knowledge, whether they are ready to accept the future careers, whether they are ready for that, and the life skills. Not only that, even if they have not graduated from anywhere, if they have not gone into any kind of a uh, uh, within court's um, high standard profession, if they have the interpersonal skills, if they can manage their life, day-to-day -day life, 
if they know they are basic mathematics when it comes to financial matters at home if they have mastered their life skills that is the most important parameter that we need to consider when we are to talk about uh, the parameters of assessing existing curricula and getting them ready for future proof education so with that i think i have taken the time and this is uh, the reference list for you if you need and uh, so with that little explanation i think we can talk or discuss uh, this matter taking like 5 to 6 hours uh, i took only one hour for this and uh, so thank you so much for your patience listening and being a very tolerant uh, kind of uh, participants for me thank you ms selvi and all you participants thank you ms chatta purnima velagadra for sharing your experiences and thoughts today i'm sure we have learned a lot in fact uh, you have actually elevated our perspectives to a higher level now we have a few questions here shall we address the first question yeah of course go ahead ms okay. selvi um i have a question from our viewer uh, it's from ika zubaida mubara ali among all the changes that can be made to today's education system to ensure that it prepares students for the challenges and opportunities of the future which is the most significant out of all the challenges yeah so uh my uh, because this is really uh, different from uh, people's point of view so with uh, the education that i have gained and the experience that i have in the field of education what i think is changing the uh, i mean paradigm shift is the biggest challenge the key thing you, how you look at education what you expect from that how do you rate uh, success this is the key challenge in the Uh, present or existing uh, globe everywhere in the world people are struggling with that that is why we have conflicts what people uh, highlight as success in education uh, will not be the same for the other uh, part of the uh, globe so that means uh, based on the context change uh, have going for a paradigm shift of the community will be the biggest challenge when you are getting yourselves ready for education for future that is what i would say thank you ms chappa okay that was indeed a beautiful explanation actually paradigm we have to go hand in hand and you can look at it that way can i uh, actually come up with another question for you yeah sure okay sure okay um is the traditional classroom model still relevant in today's world or do we need to rethink how we deliver education to students so uh, giving that uh, direct answer i would say uh, we can't totally reject the traditional classroom uh, that depends on the context that you are talking about but uh, with the features that we discussed previously uh, with regard to future of education we need to think of how the blended learning flipped learning project based learning and all these things to be incorporated into traditional classroom so when i say traditional classroom that does not mean the four walled physical room but it's the traditional room where where you talk to your students as a teacher and a students will listen to you that physical mode will definitely be no more in future if we are to talk about personalized learning because we are giving them the accountability of their learning and education will be taken as they like it so the time will be uh, decided by them the way they learn will be decided by them so in that scenario in that sense traditional classroom will be not existing in the same way as it is today but it is you can't totally reject it you need to do additions to that to make it better to improve it that is what we need to do Okay. thank you ms chappa now uh, so are you telling me that technology actually plays a very major role in modern education and that will definitely enhance learning outcomes definitely nobody can deny the fact that without technology you can't move forward 
So even today, without technology, you will not uh, be able to see me and we will not be able to talk to you like this. So as I told you, there are five key segments that we need to consider when we are going for change. In all five areas, I discussed that technology integration is really important. So without technology, there'll be no uh, education 5.0. So you have to think about that. You have nailed it, Ms. Chapa. Thank you so much. So the practicality of today's education plays a critical role in shaping a better tomorrow. Education is an ongoing process that empowers individuals to become independent, critical thinkers, and lifelong learners. The practicality of education today involves equipping students with the necessary skills and knowledge to succeed in an ever-changing global landscape. And education should go beyond traditional academic subjects and focus on fostering essential life skills such as problem solving, creativity, and communication. Additionally, today's education should also emphasize on promoting social and emotional intelligence and cultural awareness to develop responsible citizens capable of contributing positively to society. So in conclusion, Practical education is crucial for building a better tomorrow. And it is the responsibility of educators and policy makers to ensure that the education system prepares students for the future by equipping them with the skills and knowledge required to thrive in the ever evolving world. So that concludes the webinar session for today. And thank you all for watching. We hope you have learned and enjoyed this presentation. I would like to once again thank our speaker and not to forget our technical team here at the Institute of Teacher Education International Languages Campus, IPG KBA, Mr. Satya, Mr. Daini, and Mr. Fazi, and the team from Educational Technology and Resource Division, BSTB, Ministry of Education, Malaysia, KPM. The producer, Dr. Suras Kanada Sabai. Studio director, Mr. Mohammad Azian Mohammad Sofyan. Webmaster, Mr. Mohammad Farid Mohammad Fuad Oi. Streamer, Ms. Nurul Ain Aizman, and all our viewers. Thank you so much and have a nice day.